All right, let's talk about poly paint from thickness. And you can always, you're gonna be adding to history, so you can always use your history recall brush. If you haven't watched those videos, definitely go back and check those out. Uh, you can use your history recall to get your poly paint back if you need it. You can also, if you wanna play it safe, just hit clone, and that'll just put a clone out here for you to uh, always go back to. And you can always project to, or you can even use history recall brush from the clone uh, if you want to. Remember, go watch those movies, they're good. There's really good functionality in the history recall. But now, if we go down here to poly paint, you're gonna see we have a new poly paint from draft and poly paint from thickness. We'll talk about thickness first. So I do poly paint from thickness, it's gonna destroy my poly paint and it's gonna give me this result. And it looks like I got some ear problems back here. Let's go ahead and, and turn off X symmetry and just smooth those out. There we go. So now, poly paint from thickness. It's not telling me too much, but if we go over here to preferences and open up analysis, you're gonna see we have a range of colors here. Now, you can click and drag anywhere in your interface if you want to change these colors. I'm going to go ahead and keep them as is. You can also reverse their order if you want to. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to just keep the preferences. So the first thing we need to determine is how big is this object? Because right now it's telling me uh, C1 is basically the appropriate amount of thickness. And from thickness we have our min thickness is 1 and our max thickness is 5. So this is telling me the only areas on my model right now that are appropriate are these ones right here. The rest of it is too small. So let's hit W and then hit Y. And I'm going to drag from the neck all, and hold down shift all the way to the top of the head here. And I'm going to look up here and we're at two units. Now in ZBrush this is two anything units. If you want, you can go over here to Z plugin. We'll go ahead and dock it over here on the left. Go into Scale Master. And if you touch this little top uh, portion right here, this will walk you through how Scale Master works. Definitely, definitely useful. In fact, you can uh, click this link right here and you can say open this up for me and this will walk you through Scale Master. Now, if this was something I scanned in, like if I scanned in a, a two inch tall head, for example, I can go over here, I can say Set Scene Scale, and I'm gonna pick the one that's the closest. So it's gonna say, please select the closest size of the unit measurement with the subtool. If I knew it was about two inches, I'm gonna choose this one over here, which is 1.42 by two by 1.5 inches. And now you can see, okay, now I'm working in inches, and this is a that, that's a two inch scan data head that I, that I scanned in. Now there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do in Scale Master. For example, if it was a little bit off, I'd be like, actually, you know, it was actually 2.5 inches. I can go into the Y value, I can type in 2.5. I can hit Resize Subtool. And now it's 2.5 inches tall. And you can do this across multiple subtools if you had a very complex object. If you need little visual representations, you can say, give me a one unit helper. And it's gonna be a one inch by one inch by one inch unit because I have inches selected. So I can say, make me a one inch unit helper. And there we go. You can go into solo mode, it's its own subtool. It's actually labeled one by one by one. I'm gonna hit Y to go back into gizmo mode and we'll move this back. If I want, I can also make a cillimeter one. So I go take cillimeter and make a one unit helper. I'll move this one back. And you can also do a custom one. Like we'll go back into inches here and we'll say, give me a one by three, one inch. Turn off ratio, turn on one inch by three inch by five inch and then say new subtool. So now it's three inches tall, one inch wide, and five inches depth. We're in the Z direction. And again, it's labeled as such. So let's go ahead and delete all these. Let's hit delete a couple times. And we'll go ahead and turn uh, ratio back on. So we've got our scene scale, we've got our object scale. We can hit um, we can hit W, we're in gizmo mode, but if, hit, if we hit Y, that's gonna toggle uh, transpose mode, and this is really useful for measuring. Like I said, you can touch the very bottom and then hold down shift and drag it to the very top, and you're gonna see, if I grab this outer ring and move it to the front, this object is about 2.5 from the base of his neck to the top of his head, which is what we dialed in. Now, if I'm working in these units and someone else is like, you know what, send me that OBJ or STL, but I want it in millimeters, all you gotta do is click on millimeters and say export to unit scale, and it'll export this as millimeters for them. Uh, so if we go over here and we say sliders of subtool size, that'll go ahead and update this. Again, it's 2.5. Uh, we can actually hit millimeters here and say sliders of subtool size. You'll see, okay, now it's 63 millimeters tall. Or centimeters, it's 6.35 centimeters tall. You can just update your sliders to fit. So we're in inches right now. Um, you know what, it'd probably be a little bit easier. Let's go to millimeters here and we'll say sliders of subtool size. And we'll go to set scene scale. And let's we'll switch this over to millimeters. So we're gonna touch millimeters. So now we're working in millimeters, he's 63.7 millimeters tall. So let's start, let's go back to our poly paint from thickness. So now our min thickness is set to one. So one millimeter is the minimum thickness uh, we're allowing right now. So if I go over here, look for a kind of a thin area, I'm gonna go to his ear here, and I'm gonna click on one side and just let it 
snap to the other side. I'm just going to grab that outer ring and I'm going to say, okay, this is about the thickness of that ear. And you see this is 1.6 millimeters is about the thickness of that ear. And I can actually grab this and we can kind of, yeah, I say 1.6 is about right. So let's say, let's say my minimum thickness I want it to be is two millimeters. So I'm going to hit two enter and then I just do from thickness again. Now you're going to see, okay, these areas right here on my mesh are thinner than one millimeter. So I need to go through and I need to go with my inflate brush. And as I'm inflating, I can just keep hitting from thickness and that'll keep updating. And if you look back into preferences here, you're gonna see the analysis is anything that's red is less than my allowed minimum thickness. So anything in red is less than two millimeters. Pink is exactly two millimeters. This is plus one, so it's gonna be three millimeters, four millimeters, five millimeters, six millimeters. And anything in blue is seven millimeters or thicker. So as we're inflating, we're making sure we keep hitting um, from thickness. If you want to change that quality, you can. Uh, this seems to be a fairly decent quality here. So again, from thickness, just going through here and inflating from thickness. And now our ear is finally getting uh, thick enough. If you want to hold down shift and turn off RGB, you can go through and you can smooth the geometry, but leave your from thickness alone. There we go. And these eyelids are a little bit thin, so you have to go through and inflate those and thicken them up a little bit. But that'll give you uh, your result. Now, let's say you wanted to actually like bake out like a thickness map. So you can use it for like subsurface scattering wherever your skin is thinner, you want more subsurface scattering wherever it's thicker. Or, you know, wherever you're kind of thinner, there's probably not a lot of bone and stuff in there. Uh, more light's more likely to bounce around. So you can actually create a thickness map from that. Let's say your minimum thickness is actually one so actually you can go through here and uh, you can change this thickness to be like, you know what, I'm going to select all the red areas and that's going to be where most of my subsurface scattering is going to happen. So we can change this to like maybe 3.5. And you know what, let's also crank that quality up just a little bit here. So now to grab a thickness map out of this, you guys have already done this. You can go up here to masking, mask by color, mask by polypaint, because again, we're polypainting by thickness. We can just grab all the red areas, say OK. We can go down here to black color, fill object, control tap. We can control tap to kind of blur this out a little bit. And then we'll take this to white, color, fill object. And there you go. Now we have a thickness map that we can uh, transfer to it. We can UV this and transfer it to a texture map. And this can be our, like I said, our thickness map. If you want to try this on your own head in ZBrush, just click the comma key, go into tool. You can just grab this demo head here. Do another poly paint from thickness. Hit W. This head's only 1.5 millimeters high. So really quickly, we'll say, actually this head is 50 millimeters high. Resize. So now he's 50 millimeters high. We do from thickness. And let's say we want to measure the thickness of his ear. We're at one millimeter thickness. That's actually not too bad. So let's say, you know what, our thickness, our minimum thickness is one millimeter. And that's about right. And this would actually make a pretty good thickness map. But if we go through here, now we can go through here and say, okay, you know what? I need to inflate his ears. You can see the more we inflate them, the more they fall in line with our min thickness.